Greetings, Kernersville Moravian Church. Pastor Victoria here coming to share with you a little bit about what we're doing today in the Connect with Kernersville Wednesday release. I'm going to share a couple of announcements with you, and then you're going to be hearing from Vice Chair of the Elders, Eddie Boyce. You're going to be hearing from members of the Smitherman family. You'll also be seeing the Fat Tuesday pancake video that we put together, debuting all your creative pancakes that you made, decorated, and I hope you enjoyed them because they sure did look good. At the end of our video this morning, you will also be hearing a wonderful piece of music recorded by our music director, Jonathan Williams. We really hope that this video is a time of peace for you in this Lenten season to reflect and to think and give thanks for all the creative ways in which members of our church family are coming together to share the good news with you and to speak from their hearts and also update you about what's going on in the life of the congregation. For Holy Week, as I shared, we're going to be talking about some announcements. During the week of Holy Week, we're going to be having Vespers on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday evenings. And at these Vespers outside, um, we are hoping to have a Holy Week play. So if you feel led to participate in that, please email me and let me know or call the church office. I would love to work with you to share this wonderful opportunity during Holy Week. We do have some outdoor worship opportunities coming up, especially on Palm Sunday. We're going to be receiving new members. If you feel led to join the life of Kernersville Moravian Church by becoming a member, please let Pastor Christy and I know by March 12th. Again, if you want to join the congregation, we'd love to have you, and we will be receiving all of our new members in person in our outdoor worship on Palm Sunday. The adult enrichment class has taken on an opportunity to offer a soup ministry. So you'll notice in the COVID-19 updates that go into effect on March 1st, the kitchen is able to be used. So the adult enrichment class came uh, to us a couple weeks ago and said, we've been praying about this soup ministry. We'd like to find a way to help to support members of our church family and community. And so we're going to be sending out more information about their soup ministry ideas and their creativity behind it. So if you have some ideas and ways you want to serve our congregation and community members, please let us know. And as long as we stay within those COVID-19 guidelines set by the board for Kernersville Moravian Church, we'd love to help support you in that ministry opportunity. The day of prayer updates. Um, we do have another day of prayer service coming next Wednesday. There's a shredding event coming up. And... March 7th is Girl Scout Sunday. The first Sunday in March is Girl Scout Sunday. So mark your calendars. Be sure to join us in the live stream. And I hope you enjoy hearing from Eddie Boyce, members of the Smitherman family, seeing that pancake video and hearing some music from Jonathan. Enjoy. Chair of the Board of Elders. I've uh, been with Colonel Phil Moravian for, for a number of years. Most of you folks, uh, I think, know me. Uh, and right now, I want to talk a little bit about our proposed changes to the rules and regulations. Uh, we have, uh, as you, you probably know, we, we, we've sat down this past year in 2020, uh, and we did a hard look at the rules and regulations, basically because we've had some challenges uh, adhering to, to, to what those rules and regulations say we should do. Uh, we are looking at, and then one of the changes is to uh, go from a, a dual board of trustees and elders uh, of 18 total people on those boards to a single combined executive unified board of only nine members. Um, we 
again, we've looked at this for, for so, so, some time now and feel like this is really something we need to do. Um, you'll also see when you get the, uh, there's a document that'll go out to everybody, uh, basically the, the entire rules and regulations, which is a pretty lengthy 13 page document. I don't think you'll, you probably want to spend a whole lot of time going through that. But we'll also get you a, a set of the uh, key changes, key changes in those documents. And a couple of things that, that you'll see is that, of course, that change to, to a nine member board. Uh, we're also changing the, um, uh, the, the, the ability for people to serve more than one, more than one term. Uh, in the past, we've said that you serve on the board uh, and once you serve a three year term, uh, you would be off for two years before you're eligible to serve again. Um, we've decided that one of the changes we want to make is to allow folks to serve uh, more than one term, but only two terms. You can serve two three-year terms and then you can go off for two years. Um, there's, there's other changes in there, but those are the, those are the major things to consider. Uh, and I hope you'll uh, take a look at those things. And uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. Unkind are not. Today's scripture is Mark 11, verses 1 through 6. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing, untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. Now, I know that we're getting ready for Easter, but this story reminded me of something that happens to us at Christmas every year. And I wonder if this happens in your homes too. So every year we get out these balls of Christmas lights and it never fails that even if we carefully try to wrap them up neatly, when we unravel them to get ready to put them on our tree, there is inevitably a bunch of knots in these Christmas lights. And the harder we pull on them, the tighter they get, the more frustrated we get doing it by ourselves. So we often have to ask ourselves, um, we need help and we get it from you know, our husbands or our kids. I'm sure this happens in your home too. One of us will hold the end of it and the other one will gently, patiently untie the knots until the string is free. So this story made me think about Christmas lights. And the reason it did is because one word jumped out to me when I read the words from today's passage in Mark. This word reminded me about how often I need help straightening out not just my Christmas lights, but my life. Did you catch the words that are repeated five times in the verses? Five words all linked to the word untie. I pay attention when a word is mentioned multiple times, and I open my heart to hear its lesson. When I read the Bible and see a pattern like this, I ask, what does this mean? Why does this word or phrase resonate in my heart? What is God inviting me to consider? Jesus sent two of his disciples on a trip into town to find and bring back a colt for him. Jesus knew the colt was tied at a doorway, but the disciples couldn't see it yet. They simply trusted, obeyed, and found the colt. They knew to look for this clue, a colt tied to a doorway. A repeated word is also a clue for us and an invitation to ponder. Untie it and bring it here is Jesus's command. It's a wonderful statement to bring to our Lenten prayers. Lord, what do you want me to untie and bring to Jesus this season? What do we need to unravel? What are we clinging to that Jesus wants us to bring to him? Jesus knows where our knots are located. 
He sees the sin that tangles our hearts. He understands the hurts that snarl our beliefs. Sometimes getting a knot untied takes time and intention. Other times I'm surprised by how easily I can untie it, but often I need extra help. But the result is freedom being untied from what's holding me back from being closer to God. Guilt, fear, and discouragement tie us down. Worry and duties entangle us instead of bringing us delight. We hold fast to our grown-up gadgets, such as cars and technology. We would rather cling to past hurts than forgive and move on. It's easier to be sarcastic and gossip than it is to care and make a difference. We're weighed down by how we used to do things instead of taking the risk to try something new. The phrase tied to a doorway is important here. A doorway is a symbol for transition. This image presents the question, what am I clinging to that's holding me back from taking the next step? Jesus invites us to untie it and bring it here. During Lent this year, pay attention to what traps you and what burdens you carry in your heart. What can we let go of and give up into Jesus' hands. Freedom and love wait for us when we do. Jesus frees our tangled messes, unties our snarled sins, and sets us free. So this Lent, let's ask ourselves the question, what do I need to untie and give to God? Let's pray. Lord, Take all my knots that intertwine my walk with you. I give to you my tangles, messes, and sins. Set me free, Lord. Amen.